Hi, my name is Mike. Uh, today I thought we'll have a look at assessing and maybe first styling um, this Chinese juniper. Uh, it's a, a garden plant that's been dug out about a year and a half ago. Um, had to make room for a pond. So uh, I helped my neighbour to dig it up and planted it into this pot. Um, it's been growing pretty well since then. There's a lot of dead branches on it that I had to remove. Um, but as a whole, um, to me it looks like promising material. Um, I hope, as I show you, um, you will see where the potential sits in that as we explore um, how I'm going to first start to style this, this trick. Okay, I've moved the camera in a bit closer now so we can have a, a see on how we assess um, on how to further develop this tree now. Now there's a there's a host of possibilities, there's also a host of problems here. Um, possibilities is it's got a good a good trunk, it's got a good heavy base movement. Uh, and there is, although there is this middle straight section in the trunk, there is quite a there's quite a nice movement in the bottom area. Now there's this big lump where a, where a big dead uh, branch was taken off um, and it's, it would be nice to be able to incorporate that into the, into the final design. However, that poses me with a few problems. Uh, one, while, the, while there is a nice movement coming along this trunk here, we'll have this big root coming out directly towards the viewer and also there's this root here. Uh, so that, that would cause uh, a slight problem there. Um, looking at the, at the tree as a whole, this seems to be the, the preferred front. So there's a nice build up to the, to the base of the tree. The roots anchor the tree visually into the ground. Um, and I've got, still got a, a modicum of movement coming into this top section. So I'm, I'm most likely going to lose this. Um, and, and concentrate on the trunk movement in the bottom rather than the big deadwood feature. Now the second sort of problem area that we get is, is this area here. Now I've got a host of branches coming out roughly at the same angle here uh, and at the same area. So the visually the, the, the foliage sits in the top quarter of the tree um, which makes it look uh, rather awkward as it stands. Now I've got these uh, these two branches here that are growing, um, and they will be probably they will be have been left to grow out for at least another two or three years before these would be usable. Um, but I can make a start on the on the starling in the top part of the tree. So the trick is now to to see how we can how we can move these branches into into positions that will visually lower. The, the apex of the tree and bring the branches into into this sort of area um, and the foliage clouds which will make the tree more compact. So with it being a juniper it's it's, it's pretty flexible so if I, if I bring this branch across and down and do the same with this branch we can now see how we can bring that foliage down to an acceptable level. Now that will need to be done with wiring, possibly with guy ropes, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. Um, additionally, if I bring this if I bring this apex right across, visually lowers the tree quite considerably. Um, and that hopefully is, is the way I will be going um, along, along this route. The problem that we've got on here is, is this part here. Now I really need this branch um, to give me some depth to the design. However, it's literally impossible to move that. It's a very, it's got a very thick um, base here. Um, and if I if I try and move that, the whole of the top of the tree moves. So I will most likely have to make a saw cut um, somewhere in this region here uh, to be able to bend this tree down uh, and then protect the cut area with some cut paste. Um, to uh, to facilitate the healing on there, so as as we go along, I will I will make those cuts and, and show you how that's uh, how that's achieved. Um, I'm making this saw cut down down here, as you can see, and I'm going to be careful not to interrupt the sap flow to these three top branches because they're.
quite important to the design. So I'll just bring that down a little bit further to give me a little bit more clearance. And I can now start to move that, to move that down carefully. Um, and probably you can see that how that is moving. Now if I bring that, if you look at the chosen front of the tree, which is, which is here, that, tr that cut will be quite unobtrusive because I will bring that quite a way to the back. So you can see that that now allows me to move this branch uh, further down into the position where I want it to be. Now, the cut is complete and I've put some cut paste into the gap. Now that will protect the, uh, the wound from drying out um, and help to develop this, this lifeline that will come up the bottom end of this branch. Now, in order to protect this branch during the wiring and also to keep this cut paste in place, um, I will wrap that, that area in, in raffia. Now the raffia has been soaked in some water for about five minutes or so, so it should be pretty simple to apply. So I'll, I'll wrap this branch um, generally all the way around. Now the, the idea with this raffia is to make sure it's pretty tight and I generally, um, as you can hear, you can hear that squeaking noise that tells me that I'm pulling the, the raffia tight enough um, around the tree and around the bark uh, to give that decent protection. Okay, um, so that's the, that's the wrapping finished. As you can see, everywhere where the raffia was applied, I've also applied this layer of self-vulcanizing rubber tape, um, basically just to give me a bit of added protection where the wire is going to be in contact with the tree for some time uh, and where the most severe bends will be. Um, so I'll now start wiring the tree and then bring those branches into the positions um, that I want them to grow for the next couple of years. So as you can see, I've applied a bit of 4mm wire ac across here. This is aluminium wire, which pulls, looking from the front, pulls the branch down and across. Uh, and I've supported that with this guy wire here, uh, which I've tensioned up. Um, and that will hold that branch in that position now until this cut that we've made here is healed up completely. I'm just placing the branches now. Um, hopefully it'll show you um, how I've approached this now. The tree is actually not that much shorter than it was before, but visually it appears a lot more squat because of the foliage pads that are now sitting more sort of in the bottom half to, to the bottom third uh, of the tree. Um, it's also allowed me to sort of create these areas of foliage pads that can now be developed. Obviously this tree has got a long way to go yet. Uh, I would say probably three to five years before we can uh, think about putting this into a into a bonsai pot. What I want now is some some heavy growth on this so it's going to be fed and watered pretty well. I'll keep it out of the sun, direct sun for a couple of weeks now uh, just to let it recover because obviously there's been a bit of trauma here with the with the heavy bending on this on these branches. So I'll give it a bit of a, of a rest from the sunshine, keep it in a semi-shaded position um, and uh, develop it from here. So what that's given me now is the initial first styling um, and it's given me the framework that I can guide the, uh, the final training into. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed that and uh, as I said maybe it's given you a bit of an idea for some projects of your own so sometimes it's, you know, it takes a while to look at these things. I've had this tree sitting around for, for a, a year and a half. Um, and looked at it from time to time sort of looking what the development would be um, and that's the idea I've come up with hopefully it's going to work um, I shall keep you updated on that thanks for watching um, and we'll see you again bye